Well, you often get asked how to integrate the data governance features into one identity manager or what's to install to get that integrated. The good message is you can add the data governance features into any edition of the one identity manager. This is because the data governance part, it's an integrated part, which means it is an important part of the one identity manager architecture. You might see that here on the slide, there is just one module containing the data governance features. If you are only interested in data governance features and you are not really interested in high sophisticated identity management, then the data governance edition, it's the right choice for your installation. The data governance edition is a specific small edition of one identity manager parts, which perfectly supports the data governance features. You will get the connection to Active Directory and SharePoint and of course the data governance module. If you are interested in a full-blown identity management system, that means super identity management plus super data governance, then install the whole identity manager setup set and after that run the installation of the data governance module so that you get at the end both. Again, the good message is the data governance module can be integrated in every installation. Just one thing to know from a sales perspective, it might be that for the one or the other choice, you have to pay a little bit more. This is something you will discuss with one of our sales reps. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy the data governance service using the data governance configuration wizard. So at this point, I already have one identity manager installed and deployed. So I have my one identity manager database. I've installed the management tools like the manager, the designer, object browser, everything else. Um, and I've done my AD synchronization as well, and I've done my SharePoint synchronization. So now I'm going to go ahead and deploy the data governance service using this wizard. So we'll go next. Here's where I pick my one identity manager database. So I'm going to pick my SQL server. I'm going to type in my SQL server account and password. And then I'm going to actually select my one identity manager database, which is this one right here, DIM702, and go next. On this screen is where you select the options for actually installing the data governance service. You have the option of installing a fresh data governance service or upgrading an existing one, or you can just connect to the existing one as well. The checkbox that you see here for now, I'm going to uncheck this. We'll talk about that at a a later time but basically the data governance service if there is no pre-existing AD synchronization project in one identity manager then the data governance service once deployed will start harvesting servers out of active directory to make it so that you can easily start deploying agents afterwards and this particular checkbox it's going to add who you're running as to it'll create an employee object assign data governance roles Again, for now, we'll uncheck that. The server, you type where you want your data governance service to be deployed. So I'm going to type the current machine, which is this one right here. I'm going to type my port. And I'm going to pick a deployment. So a deployment is actually just a text, but it's an identification of a unique deployment of data governance within a forest. So you can have multiple deployments of data governance within the same forest, um, but within each deployment, you have a set of managed hosts that only talk to that deployment. So although you can have multiple deployments, they don't talk to one another. So in this particular case, I'm just going to name my deployment. I'll call it DGE702. And that's it. And then when you click next, ah, so I typed the wrong server name, so you get this error. So I'm gonna go okay, and I'll go back and I'll fix the name of my server, which actually the actual server name is that. So it stands for Matthew Muse. Now we'll go next. Now at this point, we are actually deploying the data governance service to the machine that you specified. So it's taking that data governance service MSI and it's installing it. We only have 64-bit uh, MSIs for the DG server, so it has to be on a 64-bit OS. 
Uh, it is installing the data governance service right now. Sometimes this will take about 30 seconds in order to deploy, uh, depending on the environment that you're deploying it to. This one should be fairly fast. To run that setup set, uh, we do that remotely, or we can do that locally, or what is the way to do, to install that service? Uh, you can install it remotely. So it'll if you pick the local machine, install it locally. But generally, you wouldn't be running this or on the machine where you want the data governance service deployed. The majority of uh, times that you would run this, it would be deployed remotely because you're running this from your manager machine. You would not have these tools installed on your data governance service machine. Very good. Okay. But in this small lab environment, obviously, I'm going to be deploying just locally. So when this is actually deployed, there will be a service running, and I'll show you um, the service running as well. So now the data governance service has actually finished installing. So we'll go finish. And I can actually show the service installed on this machine. One Identity Manager Data Governance Edition Service. There it is. It's running right there. Okay. Now, so the Data Governance Configuration Wizard does two things. It deploys your Data Governance Service, but it also creates your Data Governance Activity Database. The Data Governance Activity Database is a separate database than your one database. It's where we store the activities that the agents are collecting and monitoring and it's only known to the data governance server. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick the same database server to host this database. So I'm gonna pick my SQL server and my password. But again, we also support um, Oracle. So if I picked Oracle earlier on, then this screen would most likely show an, an Oracle-based connection screen. I'm sure it makes no sense, but uh, can I have uh, a separate database for data governance and a separate database for uh, the one identity manager, both hosted on the other platforms? I believe that they have to be on the same platform. So whichever you pick for your one identity manager database, whichever platform you're running, that's the same platform has to be your DGE activity database as well. So here is where I'm going to name my actual activity database. I'm going to remove the default because I like to put activity there just so I know that it's the activity database. So that's what I'm going to name my activity database. I'm not going to change anything else and I will go next. And that's it. You're done. So the data governance configuration wizard does those two things. It deploys the service and it creates your activity database. And I'll quickly switch over to show you that over here we have SQL Server. If I refresh this, now I have my DGE 702 activity database. And if I go back here, and then in the registry, you can see underneath there's this subnode called Broadway and Server. And this is the DGE server registration entries. And you'll see two that are very important. You'll see QuimDB connection string, which is the encrypted connection string to the One Identity Manager database. And you'll see Quam audit activity DB connection string, which is the encrypted connection string back to the DGE activity database that you just created. And so now that we have the data governance service deployed, we have our activity database created, I'm going to switch over to the manager. So now we can actually communicate from the manager to the data governance service. So here we go. There's this data governance menu item here. I'll click data governance. And then when I click on managed hosts, now we have a list of servers. This is actually uh, coming out of data governance and at this point, we can actually start to deploy agents to these hosts now. 